Okay, lawn fans, are you ready? Coming to you on a bright, sunny September morning. Today is, I think, the 28th of September. And if you take a look in the background here, you will see that my Bermuda is starting to go to sleep. It doesn't have that nice, dark, lush look, green look, that it does when it's 90 degrees out during the middle of the summer. That's because our temperatures have dropped down during the day's high 70s and at night, low 50s. And so, it's about time to put her to bed. I believe that I am going to slow down on the cutting. I'm going to keep her probably about an inch and let her go to bed. Um, I fed her a, uh, let's see here, an 11, 11, 11. And um, then I might come back with some type of stress, type of fertilizer that's high in potassium to close her out for the season. Now let's talk about the season, some things that I learned and some things that I did well and some things I didn't do so well at. Um, the first thing is, let's go back to fertilizers. Um, I know there's a lot of discussion on YouTube and social media right now around uh, fertilizer companies, which one's the best or which ones you should use. And really nobody can tell you what is the best fertilizer for your lawn except for your soil. And what does that mean? That means you got to get a soil test done. Um, some people will say if you're not going to have a soil test done to throw out a triple like a 11-11-11, uh, but you don't know if that's what your soil needs. And also at the same time, you could be putting too much phosphorus down on your lawn, which could damage your soil or, or set your soil back. And so really all you have to do is dig around in your yard in a, let's say five or six different places, send that off to an extension company or send it off to a soil testing company. Um, let them get the results back to you in about a week and then you'll know exactly what your soil needs and that's probably the most responsible way to go about applying applications of fertilizer and other other things to your lawn um, so that's the first thing the second thing let's talk about is your lawnmower you can use any type of lawnmower you, that are out there um, you can use a rotary you can use a reel um, you can use a Walmart brand you can use a Home Depot brand you can use a company that specializes in lawnmowers I started out taking care of my lawn with a rotary and then I saw the way that real mowers cut Bermuda grass and I decided I want to go with the real mower. Now the most important thing about taking care of your yard and cutting it is a sharp blade. You don't want to cut your lawn with a uh, dull blade that's going to rip it and tear the grass and then make it more susceptible to putting or to having disease and fungus come in because that's what it'll do. If you're not getting a nice crisp cut across the blades, across the leaves of the lawn, and you're ripping it, then disease will creep in, fungus will creep in. Now we're, while we're talking about that, you don't always have to throw chemicals at your yard to overcome a fungus. Um, what you can do is you can let it grow out. Bag the clippings every single time that you have a fungus on your lawn, bag it, Get rid of it, get it out of there, because if you're just cutting it, you're running through it, cutting it up, delivering it to another part of your lawn for it to be affected. If you do choose to put down some type of chemicals on your lawn, then rotate them. Azoxystrobin, propiconazole, rotate them in and out. Don't use the same type of treatment over and over and over because that your yard will, get, um, will build up a tolerance to that and it'll lose its um, efficacy. So let's say it's about like going to the doctor and if you go to the doctor and every single time you go he gives you amoxicillin your body's going to grow is going to build up a um, tolerance to a amoxicillin so just think about that when you're applying disease control um let's see here watering i learned a season of, uh, well i learned last season about watering and i experimented with it this season but if you don't know how much water that your uh, sprinkler or your irrigation system is putting out then put out a tuna fish can that's about an inch deep run your sprinkler system and see how long that it takes for that tuna can to fill up that's what you need to be giving your lawn once a week now i break my watering down two times a week so i put half a uh, inch down um say on a monday and put a half inch down on a thursday so i water two times a week during the heat of the summer i may bump that up to putting uh, between an inch and a half to two inches in the heat of the summer now, if I notice that I've got spots in my yard that are turning a bluish gray, that's a hot spot, that's what it's called, then what I do is I uh, syringe. And what is syringing? 
I find those areas, I run my sprinkler for maybe five minutes in the heat of the day, the hottest part of the day. I run my sprinkler, five minutes, boom, done. Boom, it turns back to its green color. That's syringing. Now, if you don't do syringing, then that could be when you're starting to see it turn from a brown gray, or I'm sorry, a blue gray into a brown because of numerous days, that hot spot heating up, heating up, heating up. And so syringing is a way to prevent that from happening. Over here, I don't know if my camera will pick that up right now, but you can see where the windows reflect onto the grass right there. And those will heat up during the um, mornings and uh, during the afternoons, that heat builds up on top of that. And so it's constantly getting heat to that. So I'll come in there and I'll syringe those areas. Now when we're talking about hot spots, let's talk about something else too. Down here next to the road, I've got asphalt, I've got cement, and then underneath this, I've got a bed of slate rock that runs either side over here too. So what I did to combat that is I utilized a moisture manager. I sprayed that out with a hose and sprayer, put it all, I, I, I sprayed, sprayed it pretty thick through that area, and I also came back and I put some peat moss in that area. And what does peat moss do? It helps the soil um, retain um, the moisture in addition to the moisture manager. And so I've done that up through the driveway here. And if I found some hot spots that I've got different places in the lawn, I've sprayed it on there. And that helps my lawn to stay nice and green um, during the heat of the summer. I believe the moisture manager is good for, I think, 60 days, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but look that up, Google it, moisture manager. I don't want to um, start advertising names again, anything like that. I'm trying to get away from naming products on my channel because of all these affiliate links and this and that that people are utilizing it's getting a little out of hand nowadays but so syringing um moisture manager peat moss um use a tuna fish can to see how much water that you're putting out now let me go back to that because some of you guys may think well i'm watering enough i run my um irrigation system my sprinklers i'm running that um 30 minutes a day well if you don't know how much water that your system's putting out, you don't know that you're putting down enough. It's not the time, it's the amount of water that you're putting out. So you need a way to measure that. And I'm telling you, that tuna fish can is the best way. Um, I've got one here in this uh, bed. And I don't see yeah, it here. It is. I've got one right here. I keep that there. When it rains, that lets me know how much rain that I collected. Okay, let's go to um, cutting the yard again. Let's go back to that, how to cut. So I had a few times this season where I did not like the appearance of my lawn. It didn't, it didn't give me that pop, that good green look, and I wondered what I was doing wrong. So I just thought, hey, I'm gonna throw more applications at it, more products at it, and that'll fix the issue. And that's not what you wanna do. You're, if your lawn doesn't need it, then why are you throwing it out? If you really don't like the way that your lawn looks, then reset the high to cut on it. And that's what I should have done from the very beginning when I started not liking the appearance of my lawn. And what does it mean to reset the high to cut? So let's say right now that this is an inch and I don't like the way it looks. Then what am I gonna do as far as resetting it? I may take it down to less than half an inch and then I'm gonna let it grow up to the height that I want to maintain it at. So get what I'm saying here. If my yard is here, my lawn is here and I don't like the looks and I want to reset the how to cut. I'm going to cut it down to here and then I'm going to let it go back up to where I want to maintain it at. You can't cut it down to the height you want to maintain it at and just think, all right, everything's going to be okay because you're still going to have in Bermuda, you're going to have the brown stalks, the, the a woody type of appearance where you see brown haze in your yard. You got to reset it low and let it grow back up to the height of maintenance. Um, and again, make sure that you have a sharp mower blade. What else here are we gonna talk about? Um, reading labels. This is huge, guys. Now I know some of us are thinking, hey, um, I want my yard to be the greenest it can possibly be for a certain date or for a certain part of the season. So I'm gonna put a little bit more than what the bag rate says or you may have a disease um, or a fungus in your yard and, I'm, and you say, well, I wanna get this thing out of here quicker, so I'm gonna put more than what it says. Um, uh, insecticides. Um, well, I've got some bugs and things I wanna get rid of, so I'm gonna put a little bit more in the bag rate. 
they have those rates on the bottles and on the bags for a reason. Don't overdo those because they know better than we do. They know how much, they have scientists out there that are telling them this is how much you need to tell your customers to apply to the lawn. So make sure that you're reading those. A few weeks ago, I had a problem with spurge coming into my lawn and I went to Home Depot. I could have just grabbed something off the shelf, brought it home, sprayed it and wondered why is it not killing the spurge? But I took the time to read the bottles of all the different weeds that were listed on those. There was only one product that I found that killed the type of spurge that I had here. So make sure you're reading as far as the rates to put it out and as far as what it is meant to do, if it's gonna do the job that you need it for. Read those labels, I'm telling you, because I used to be in that group with you guys that I would grab something and I would throw it out and not weigh it, not um, determine how much square footage I had and how much I needed to put out, um, if it was the right product for my lawn. Uh, so just make sure you do that. That's huge, reading your labels. Um, we talked about moisture manager and peat moss. Those are two good ways to combat um, hot spots and your lawn drying out, your lawn um, getting too hot during the summer. Um, we talked about syringing. Um, okay, so I've had neighbors ask me how my lawn stays so thick. And right now it's not a good indication, but during the summer, my lawn is a pretty thick lawn. And there's no magic secret to that. I feed it when it needs to be fed. Um, I treat it for micronutrients, but the most important thing is I love to cut my yard and I cut it often. And so there are sometimes during the summer where I'm cutting every day. Um, at the at, at Mostly I'll cut every other day, but there's sometimes when I'm cutting every day to keep it low. And by cutting it low, then I'm encouraging it to grow vertically. And so instead of letting it, instead of cutting it once a week, letting it grow high, chopping it down, another week letting it grow high chopping it down then it gets a thin look to it if you cut your yard off then and you don't have to go crazy like i do but if you cut your yard let's say two times a week is even better uh, or three times a week you're going to see a huge improvement in how thick that your yard looks because you're encouraging it to grow in a different way encouraging it to spread out versus growing up chopping it down growing up chopping it down so cut as often as you can, but I cut a lot because I like to work in my yard. That's my hobby. I like to work in the yard. So that will help you with a thicker looking lawn. What else do we have here? Um, so we talked about fungus treatments and really if you want to be serious about your yard and about care of your yard, you're going to want to get out there and take a look at it at least every two days to look around and see if there are any changes. Hey, do I have dollar spot coming up in my yard? Do I have um, ant mounds in my yard? Um, is it starting to thin out here for some reason? You gotta take a look at those things and that's gonna help you be preventative instead of reactive to things that are going on in your yard. And it's much easier to be preventative and treat it for certain things than to wait until it happens and then you've got an issue, okay? Um, let's see here. Um, I have got, uh, oh yeah, army worms. So here's a huge thing I've already, uh, learned about army worms. I didn't have to worry about them in years past, but this year was a bad year for army worms. And um, so I started seeing some places in my neighbor's yard and I told him about it and he had it treated. And that was like a first generation army worm. That, and so he killed them off. Well, then I started noticing moss coming up in my yard, little small moss. And I knew, hey, moss like that will lay eggs that turn into army worms. Um, so I was preventative with my treatments and I put out um, Duocide and I also put out some Spectracide product. But they came in anyways and they came from my neighbor's yard. He had a second generation army worms come through. They got over into my yard and so I had to be reactive with that and I took care of it, but it was late in the season and I had some damage that's not gonna recover. And so yeah, I ended up ending my season with some brownish looks around my beds. Not happy about it, but it's just one of those things that happened and it, it didn't matter um, how much that, was, uh, that I put into my preventative treatments, they were just gonna come. So, Keep an eye out on that with army worms. If you start to see your yard getting a brownish look and it's creeping, so it's growing, 
then that is army worm damage and it, you're going to see that august september and try to be proactive and treat those at a curative rate i mean a preventative rate but if it happens it happens um, usually they'll be in and out in two weeks and uh, then your yard will start to recover on its own if you don't do any type of treatments to kill them but um, so watch for that now here's a uh, thing this season this was going to be my putting green i don't know because of the shadows if you can see but this thing right here this bush or this plant or shrub whatever you want to call it that's a juniper rug and that at one time covered this entire area so it came from right here and it went all the way up and i dug all that out um and i thought that i had done a good job of leveling but when you start to decide you're going to do a putting green and you have to do leveling you realize how much sand and soil that it takes to level something and here i spent a good part of my summer um, with leveling this and bringing dirt in leveling it with sand all sorts of the mixtures um, and it still needs another round of leveling that's not going to get done until the spring and while i'm talking about that leveling and top uh, top dressing you want to do that in an active part of the season when the lawn's really growing well and um, you want to shave your yard down then you want to come in with the fertilizer and then a few days later do your um your leveling project or your top dressing project and that the fertilizing and cutting it down low is going to help you so much to identify the low spots and then when you're spreading the sand out you'll be able to see where your dips and lows are at um, and then the fertilizer will help the yard bounce back quicker and um, the grass to grow up through that sand but going back to this putting area um thanks to um uh can't believe i just forgot his name but anyway anyways uh, there's a guy out there that's doing a putting green right now and um he told me that rolling is a very important part of a putting green and by rolling you'll have a huge uh circular uh, cylinder that you fill with water and you um, push it back and forth across your green to get everything to compact down to be level I didn't do enough of that this season on this putting green which probably would have helped me tremendously in getting this thing the as smooth and level as I wanted it to be but it will be ready this next season all I have to do is make the investment in a greens grade mower and I've got a 15 year olds getting a car this next year so we're gonna see which one of those wins out and hopefully mom will let me get both so um that putting green though it took a, a lot of labor to get that in that condition right there um, i had an area down here that i didn't experiment with you're not gonna be able to tell now because i have come back since this time and i put down a 1608 um, i believe um, here but this was a test uh, plot that i did and i did not give this any fertilizer um, during the season beyond and i say fertilizer beyond potassium and that was just to help with the stress because of that slate rock bed down through there um, i gave it uh, another moisture manager and i did give it a uh, some humic mixed with uh, uh, biochar um, over here i had an area that i did at one time say it was my fertilizer of the year and i will tell you the name of that one it was the scott summer blend um, but since that time we've gotten a puppy and this is the puppy side yard now so it looks pretty bad um, because that's where he does his business at let's talk about landscaping and i know this is a long video and if y'all aren't staying tuned for all of it i understand but landscaping i'm a firm believer in using um organic type of uh, fertilizers because they're slow release they're good for the environment um, they do not push a quick burst of top growth um, they will seep down in the ground and you'll have slow growth and it's better suited for things like azaleas like gardenias um, and uh, tea, ol um, tea olives and things like that so if you want to use a synthetic fertilizer realize you're going to get a quick boost of top growth but if you use a granular organic you're just going to have some slow growth that's going to carry on for a longer amount of time 
But anyways, that's what I do on my azaleas. I noticed right now that those azaleas um, have a little bit of insect activity on them. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of those. But uh, realize that right now, it's in, here in the south, this is the time that you want to uh, put your plants and shrubs in the ground. It helps them get acclimated through the uh, fall, through the winter, and then in early spring, they're ready to rock and roll. And when you do plant your uh, shrubs, you wanna make sure that you're not just digging a hole and sticking the plant down in the ground. Um, what you wanna do to help them acclimate better to the environment is you wanna put some type of uh, mixture in there of like a mushroom compost, a soil conditioner, and the native soil. You'll mix those around You'll put some in the bottom of the hole, you'll put the plant in, and then you'll fill around it with that soil conditioner, a compost, and the native soil. Um, and I can tell you that uh, there's some people out right now that are talking, uh, or there's an argument, I guess, going around about certain type of products that are out there that we put in our yards, um, that we spray in our yards, and are they 99% water, or are they really um, effective at helping? I pour out anything that's left in a tank, I pour them out on all my landscaping. And I can tell you that my gardenias have taken off since I started doing that. You can't tell my ferns now because it's at the end of their season, but those things were massive and dark green this year. And I poured them into my tanks out on those. Um, I poured them out. If you look at those um, um, daylilies down there, those things are probably about three foot tall, if not taller. I poured it out there. And uh, there were there are definitely um, some results that happen, positive results that happen as a result of that. Um, it's time for my knockouts to be cut down and trimmed back. They're at the time of year where they're almost done. Um, I put blood meal on those, another organic. Um, so what's my point is right now, I guess, my point is, it's time to get your uh, plants, your shrubs, whatever, in the ground and to use some type of mixture when you put them in the ground instead of uh, just the native soil, digging a hole, sticking it in, covering it up. Also, it's okay to use some products on, um, put humic on there, to put some type of growth stimulator on there. Um, but get them ready to go to bed for the winter and to wake up in the ground for the spring. That way they'll survive the summer. Um, and that's gonna be it guys. I think I'm running too long in this video. I just wanted to touch on a few things um, But it was a great season. I learned a lot this uh, last year was my first full season um, Of really starting to do the lawn care work this season. I was really into it I did a lot of research and studying and watching other people's videos I went on lawnforums.com read a lot of articles on there and I really got into it and I had a lot of positive results from that and so I appreciate all the guys and you guys know who you are that I learn things from um, and that's what I guess is a, a good point to make is that there are a lot of people out there that are out there to uh, make a dollar or to sell you things that you don't need and uh, it's kind of common sense guys if you watch enough and you research enough about your lawn you can pull it off water it a sharp blade and um, water it sharp blade fertilize it, and cut often. That's all it takes. You just gotta be into it like that. So Bermuda Brian, probably touching out, or checking out here until January, February, then I'll be back. But, uh, and I may have some stuff I throw on Instagram in the meantime. But here in Northwest Georgia, it's the end of Bermuda season. Thanks to all you guys subscribing this season for liking my videos. I appreciate you, and I'm out.